Morning Liberty. I thought it was you. I thought you were doing it. But I thought you were going. No, I I thought we just said that you were going to do it. It's well, fine. I'll do it if you want me to. All right. Start okay. the show then. Well, I was trying to get all the right hashtags in this Instagram post real quick, but now you ruined it. So well, that's obviously not going to perform very well. We've got but, recording to do. All right. Well, so saw a little news story flash by earlier about uh you guys heard about this this uh this boat getting hit in iran did you see that man i did actually um i guess that overnight it was last night sometime like our time i guess and uh somehow there's video of it yeah well there's a video of a boat moving away from another boat it was close to a boat yeah it was a smaller boat close to a bigger boat yeah it's uh, black and white. It looks like a 1937 movie. Uh, no sound. So yeah. Well, it was it was taken at night. They say and it and it it um I here's the deal. Here's the deal. We are not a conspiracy theorist program, are mm-hmm. we? Not no. at all. Nope. But we are. One of the reasons that we started this program is because we're always skeptical of the government regardless of who's in control so um as you should be everybody should be yeah skeptics i can't figure out i haven't been able to figure out why iran would want to strike a japanese uh oil shipment um and then deny that they did it sneak in uh through cover of night and remove evidence of the fact that they did it um, and then just pretend like they're just going to go on their way. Like, uh, I, I don't really know. I can't figure out the reasoning behind that is the issue. Because if you're Iran, you have to know that, uh, let's say Iran did this. Well, they know that they're going to be blamed for it immediately, that the U S is going to blame them for it immediately. And regardless of whether or not they take credit for it, uh, we're, we're going to blame them for it and it's going to lead to some kind of conflict. So I can't figure out why they would want to deny that they did it is, is the problem. Well, the, so kind of the overall story. So is, is that overnight there was this Japanese tanker, like you said, carrying oil and somehow some way Iran was able to sneak some landmine. I can't remember exactly what mines they were called. They were, Somehow able to sneak some mines. Boat mines, I think, is the proper term. Yeah, tanker yeah. tanker mines, maybe. Yeah. And so they were able to uh, to somehow sneak some mines on the side of the hole of that big tanker ship, mm-hmm. and they exploded them, and one of them apparently didn't explode. So that's they were picking up an, a one that didn't explode, according to the U.S. Navy. Okay. And Mike Pompeo has come out and said that we know Japan, we know that Iran did it, and Iran is denying, and the crew of the ship, which is owned by a Japanese company, said that all of them have said the reports coming out is that they were hit by a flying object. Like if they were to, they they know for sure it wasn't a torpedo because it was flying through the air, and they said it, it wasn't any type of like explosion at first. It was more like they said like a bullet, yeah, like something that penetrated the boat, hmm. and then it exploded. So the, once again, issue I have with this. Now, first off, let's say that Iran did do this. Now, should we care about a country who, to to damage people outside of their country, they have to physically carry landmines and plant them on objects, and then some of them explode, not even all of them, and then they have to physically go back and retrieve the objects and then and then remove them like is that like a government is that a country that you're like really worried about like that's their best that's their technology is that they had to carry a bomb to the ship detonate it one of them didn't work and then they had to go back and get it with their little tugboat and uh and and leave with it like does it sound scary to yeah. you like is that bad it sounds like freedom is at stake yeah i mean i'm I'm kind of I'm kind of scared to go out on the lake this weekend, honestly. <laughs> right, the, the lake might be infested with Iranian mines. You never know. You know, <laughs> it's better to be safe. It's 
you know, Trump came out and said, and I wish I had an audio clip of this because it'd probably be really funny to listen to, but I just read the article and Trump came out and said, we know Iran did it. You saw the boat. Like, cl- like yeah. you could clearly see a boat in that video. Go look up the video, please. We might post it on the Facebook later. Um, go look at, go look at the video. It's, you can't, I don't know. I'm not military either, so I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right about this situation. And like Nate said, we're not conspiracy theorists here, but it seems like the U S has been wanting to go to war with Iran for some length of time. Now, now we talked about some foreign policy on a couple episodes ago and the, the Liberty take on, on military action is not that we can't use military action or not that we won't use military action, but military action should be the last resort when Liberty is in direct threat. It's not about oil. It's not about, uh, you know, unverified American interests like what they ha- like what we've been doing in Libya and Syria and yeah wherever else well America's on we, the world so everything's in American interest I guess right we, what it's like seven different countries that we're fighting against right mm-hmm. now we're in seven different that we know wars. we're still in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, trying to topple all these dictators and it's like Iran has a president that was democratically elected it's not like there's a dictator yeah. In Iran. Now, Iran doesn't like America. I mean, we know that. But the question is, is like, do we need to go to another war? And it's not really a shock that guys like John Bolton and Mike Pompeo and these guys that come out and say uh, America, Pompeo came out and said America will defend itself and will defend its allies. So first of all, the first question is, what is America defending itself against? Because a Japanese tanker is the one that, that had issues. We don't yeah. know exactly what the issues are yet. And honestly, we still owe them one. So we shouldn't be mad about that anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, I mean, that's, we still got we got some history there yeah. that hasn't really been cleared up, I guess. Um, but now Japan's an ally, I guess, so are we going to come to the defense of Japan? But Japan's not even coming out and saying Iran did it. It's like it's a huge push by America and Germany and China and a lot of other countries have come out and said, whoa, like, let's pump the brakes here. Yeah. We don't know. Like, let's investigate and figure out what's going on before we just start launching missiles at countries. Now, to Trump's uh, in Trump's defense, in a, in a good thing, we haven't just started launching missiles. So that's good. That's a good thing. We're not just bombing places right now in Iran, other places, obviously. But. Uh, so that's good that we didn't just start bombing them immediately after we saw the video of that boat. So that's good news, at least. But I still um, I have a hard time with it because I can't figure out why they would do this and then deny that they did it, knowing that we would say they did it anyway. There's no there's no incentive for them to deny it at that point. If they know they're about to get into a war with the U.S., um, why deny it? Like then you're just looking weak, you know, the, it really doesn't, doesn't make any sense from a strategic standpoint. Right. I guess at all. No, like not even, it doesn't, like, the fact that if you th- try to think about this logically, it makes the probability that it makes any sense is, is close to zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's seriously. Really? So I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see some more stuff play out over the weekend and see, see where this goes. But I, I'm not up for, you know, I mean, I'm not in the military, so I can't say it that way, but I, I'm not up for another war. I'm not up for sending our troops into another war. There's, we've lost uh, over, over 5,000 troops so far in our, since we started the war on terror. And this is an actual uh, government that has an actual military. So this is, a, this is a lot different. We haven't taken on a government that had an actual military in quite some time. So not that we wouldn't win. Obviously, we would wipe the floor with them. But you're still putting American lives at risk for what? You know, it's a little personal for me. My brother's in the Marines. You know, his reserve unit has been called up in like every conflict that we've had so far. So like this drives me nuts, man. Like why? Tell me why. Tell me why an, an American brother or husband or father or mother or wife or daughter is going to die fighting Iran. It, 
it, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever to control oil, to to help some other country. That's what you know. Constitution says uh, to you know entangling alliances are not a good thing. Um, it's it's not a great you know just not a great idea because you end up getting pulled into a war all the time. You know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have alliances, but this kind of thing where like if any conflict happens in the world, we're somehow going to get pulled into it because one of our friend's brother's cousins is in an alliance with their friend. Like you're just going to get pulled into it all the time. So I'm, I'm not into it. I'm not excited. I'm not either. And Liberty right now isn't at stake. Like let, okay. Let's say, is Iran a great country? They're probably not. There, there's some, some bad things that happen in Iran, but, and I mean, in, in Iran, there's still Christians and there's still, uh, Muslims and there's still people that live peacefully and they have a, a democratically elected government and president. And it's not like they're being, their people aren't being, you know, chemical weapons or anything. There's nothing happening to their people by the government, by a governmental regime. So even that excuse is out the window, even though I don't agree that you should even topple regimes, because if you look at the history, uh, you know, Syria is a bad place right now, even though they haven't been able to topple Assad uh, Libya is a way worse place now that Gaddafi's gone, and Iraq is, uh, um, I can't say the words on an here. S hole. It's an S hole. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying the people there are S holes. Yeah. But, but the country itself is a complete power vacuum. So it's not obvious that us going in there and knocking heads of state down has made the the people any better or the country any better at, at all. I would say on the contrary, it's completely obvious that it hasn't worked at all. Yeah. Well, what we've done the last 20 years hasn't worked. Afghanistan is still the same it was before we went. Now, obviously, we got Osama bin Laden, and we feel we've we've killed some high level or high high ranking terrorists. Luckily, we went into Afghanistan so we could get Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. Right. That was yeah. Yes. For, for sure. So so the thing about it is though is is. You know, Thomas Jefferson said that the greatest threat to liberty is perpetual warfare. And the reason why, you know, most of our lives, by the way, I'm 30, we've been at war for 20 years. So almost, uh, what's the math on that? Three fourths of my life? Two, two uh, out of three, well, it's actually. Two, it's two thirds. You just take, yeah. you take the zeros off. Yeah, you take those off of there and then you have two, 20 out of 30. Right. So then you just do two yeah. divided by three. When you and I bet five fourths of people won't even get that. No, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. That's dad joke. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty. You are a dad. I am. Yeah. yeah, I'm allowed to do that now. Like, can you imagine the the idea? Like when Parker, he uh, he's 16 years away from being able to enlist, and we'll probably still be in this war. I know. So maybe get drafted. Even it's pretty crazy. Are we past draft age? I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the draft age is. Yeah. I know I had to fill out, like I was forced to fill out a card when I was 18. Yeah. It was against my will. Sexist forms. Yeah. yeah. Now look, I'm not saying if America was under attack, I would, I wouldn't defend her cause I would. Uh, but right now we're not. Yeah. So, and, and when nine 11 happened, I was, uh, I was in seventh grade. So I was 13. Mm. Yeah. It, um, the, yeah, I remember. I was going to say, yeah, nine eleven. That was uh, what was I a sophomore in high school? I guess at that point in time, possibly. You would have been a freshman because I was in seventh grade Is for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. We went to the same school. We did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I think. I think we've made our point. Our point clear on this. The best thing to do is uh, kind of what all the other countries are saying to do, which is let's make sure that they did this. Uh, before we go to any kind of war, because it's not going to be pretty. Wars, wars are bad. We don't like them. Well, but I, I kind of want to expand this conversation, though. Obviously, we like our stance is we shouldn't go to war with Iran, unless there's something we absolutely don't know that we can shed some light on. The second thing we can talk about is we've been in all these wars without a declaration from Congress, and the Constitution explicitly states that the United States cannot go to war without a declaration from Congress and Congress can only appropriate money for war for a period of two years and then they have to vote on it again. So I'm kind of curious how the hell we ended up in the situation we're in anyway. 
Got that there uh, authorization of use of military force just keeps getting uh, renewed all the time. What did so. um, what did Hamilton say? I believe anything contrary to the Constitution is null and void. Mm-hmm. So would that you know authorization of defense act or whatever it's called would that be would that be circumventing the Constitution? Most things uh, that the government does circumvents the Constitution actually these days. And this is a real problem. Yeah. Because the the Constitution is actually the second law. It's the second written law. Uh, the first is the Declaration of Independence, by the way, in case you didn't know that, in the U.S. Code. Uh, the second one is, is obviously the Constitution. There might, be, there might be actually a few before that because we had the Articles of Confederation and some mm-hmm. other things before the Constitution <clears throat> took place. But anything contrary to the Constitution is null and void and should be. And you have a few guys like Rand Paul and Thomas Massey, Justin Amash, Mike Lee, a few freedom fighters that that are constantly questioning uh, Obama's administration, the Bush administration, and now the Trump administration of continuing these perpetual wars that are putting us trillions of dollars in debt. I believe we've spent, since, since the Iraq war, we've spent $8 trillion on military expenditures. Now, that doesn't even include costs of like taking care of our veterans and all the issues that they have. There's all kinds of post-war costs. The Department of Defense in that time period has lost like five or six trillion dollars that they can't account for. Yeah. Like they don't know where it's at. They did an audit and it was like, I read an article, it was like five trillion, something like that. They just lost. It just fell in between the seat cushions. Right. I would say. Right. It's got to be in the Humvees. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Just. Ironically, you called, um, you called Rand Paul and Thomas Massey and, and those guys freedom fighters. Right. Which is a, which is a, a great term, actually, because they're pushing um, for Congress to declare the wars if we're going to go. And, and they are actually the, they're freedom fighters because they're trying to get us to adhere to the Constitution. Now, that's no knock on military personnel. Obviously, everyone who has joined the military is uh, doing us a great service and, and, we we never uh, we never want to portray that we don't support the troops themselves because they're they're doing they're making a great sacrifice, but the government is putting them in a place that they shouldn't be in. So the idea that we should declare the wars, you know, Congress Congress is is you. Congress is the representation of the people, and and right. that's why they're supposed to declare the wars because. If the government is going to send um, the people to war, it it is supposed to be uh, agreed upon by the people, and the people are supposed to say, obviously, our liberties are in danger, and we must go to war with these people. So it would be different. You know, maybe they come out and they declare war against Iran. Uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, you hear a lot of people talking. Um, you always hear Iran, they're chanting death to America, death, death to Israel. Like I hear people rattling off these talking points all the time. And they they probably are, or, or they are. We, we probably actually have video um, during the daytime of them doing that. So we've, we, um, <laughs> we <laughs> they, they, say, they say things like this. They chant things like this. They hate America. They, they want us to be destroyed, but that's, that's, okay like that they're over there and 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 we're over here it it does not mean that we need to go over there and and annihilate them because they don't like us you know they're not attacking us right now so whether or not they're in the streets chanting death to america and burning our flag doesn't doesn't matter you can see that stuff down the street in san francisco sometime like the, there's no reason really to there's no reason to go attack a country because because they don't like us, which uh, I, I fear is what they're going to use as the a propaganda. talking point. I hear, you know, I like listening to Ben Shapiro. I listen to him all the time. He's a, he's got a great show, uh, but he is, just goes down this list. Of, you know, they're chanting death to America, chanting death to Israel, chant, you know, all these bad. And I'm just like, okay. Okay. I mean, you get to drop bombs. Yeah, on people? I mean, they don't like us, so right. so you're gonna so you're gonna send my brother to to go fight them for. I mean, for what? Because they don't like us. It, they said bad words. They about said us? bad words. They don't respect America. Who, who cares? Right. I I don't care about well, that. Here's an idea. It was a Japan ship that was attacked. So, if Japan wants to retaliate, 
like let Japan retaliate. And then if Japan asks us for help, then like Congress can consider it. Yeah. That, that's like, a what great, a, great why, point. Why would America need to strike first? I don't know. To defend her allies. Yeah. That if, isn't, if anything, you know, if an American ship was struck, then we could have that conversation. Right. That would make more sense. Yeah. That would be something more believable. Uh, you posted an article today on on Facebook. What was oh that? yeah, so well, it was it was actually just the Wikipedia entry for the. Um, so the, when we got into the the Vietnam War, uh, they had the the trigger for that war was uh, an an attack that happened in the Gulf of Tonkin, I think is what it, what it was called. Um, so we we got into this war. There were a couple attacks that happened, and what we found out later was that one of them, even the Secretary of Defense uh, later on in questioning, admitted that one of the attacks did not actually happen, that, that the idea of it was, was actually fabricated to help us get into the war. And, you know, we find out about these things years and years down the road, and I, I don't want to have this be one of those things. So I posted it on our page, not really to just stoke a bunch of conspiracy theories or anything but i don't think it's i don't think it's a great idea to just automatically believe everything that people in the government are telling you all the time you know if 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 you're a republican and we had a democratic government you you probably would be skeptical of everything that they said all the time and the the uh danger i see here is that we have a republican president in charge and he has said it's iran look at that picture of the boat and so it was obviously them. And, and so everyone's just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, it was obviously Iran. You're just, you're just talking conspiracy theories. So I posted that on the page just so people would see, like, the Vietnamese War, I mean, what did we lose? 40, 50, 60,000, 60, 60, yeah. 60,000 people that we, that we lost in that war. And you even, you can go to the, to the Wikipedia page for the Gulf of Tonkin, and you can see a quote. From uh, who is a Secretary of Defense, uh, Robert McNamara, said that uh, one of them happened. The attack on August second happened, and there was absolutely no response to it, uh, no Defense Department response. And then there was, uh, they said another attack happened on August fourth uh, in the Gulf of Tonkin, uh, and that was the the I believe the next day is when uh, Johnson signed the uh, Tonkin Gulf resolution i think is is something like what that was called um and so secretary of defense robert mcnamara said but the august 4th gulf of tonkin act never happened he he literally said that so it's possible is what i'm this is possible that that the government does these kinds of things i I have another question for you what were we doing in the gulf of tonkin that's always a good question, right? Like, Why are we over there in the first place? And I want to go ahead and tell everyone that's going to be like, oh, well, you're just trying to make excuses. You're just an or, isolationist. Yeah, you're just an isolationist. Like, look, I'm not against military force. If somebody attacks America, we should literally bring whoever that is to their knees. Like, it literally unleash hell on them. Like, screw the rules of engagement. Like, unleash hell on whoever caused us harm because you're allowed to defend yourself. But the question has to be, if you look at the history and they released a lot of, uh, uh, CIA documents, um, the CIA, back before it was the CIA, actually it was the OSS in the fifties was messing around in Vietnam and the middle East and all these other places secretly, you know, ousting dictators. And I get, we were trying to defeat communism, which is a bad thing. Communism is a really terrible thing. Uh, but what were what were we doing in these places? Why does America need to be the world police? I, w- I wish somebody could answer that question for me. What gives America the th- the authority to be the world police? And in fact, like one of the Navy's slogans is the fact that they're the world police. And isn't that weird? Isn't that weird to think about? Like who granted America the power to police? The earth. Yeah. To just go over to other people's countries. And I mean, can you, can you imagine it was like, oh, okay, we've got uh, Iranian and Vietnamese and, and, uh, and all these different 
countries, their boats are just hanging out in the Gulf of Mexico, making sure that when our boats go back and forth between Florida and, you know, Panama and, and all these different places, uh, when they're going around in the Gulf of Mexico, I think it's a good idea that we have some Vietnamese and some Iranian ships in the Gulf of Mexico to make sure everything's going okay. You know, that's insane. The, uh, no one in America would be okay with that what, whatsoever. There was a really funny Onion article I posted one time that I'll, I'll mess up the phrasing on it, but it was basically saying that uh, Syria and other, uh, maybe Syria and Lib- Lib- Libya and Iraq uh, were considering military intervention due to recent uptick in gun violence in Chicago. Like that's right. you know that's a ridiculous idea. You would never be okay with another country walking in and say, "Hey, I mean, look at all these people. You got people just getting. You got an obvious civil war going on here in one of your cities. We need to step in. We There's need like, to start dropping some some very targeted bombs in different neighborhoods to make sure that this doesn't happen anymore. I mean, we we would think that's insane. That we'd never be okay with it. Yet we go around everywhere and do that all the time. We meddle in every single election that we can get our hands in all the time. And if we don't like the election, we go in with the military and take out the person that we don't like. And then we get mad that another country wants to meddle in our election and act like it's the craziest thing that's ever happened in the world. And if you don't believe us, then you can look up the redacted or or the unclassified CIA documents that they released. Like all this information is out there. And the fact that our government meddles in those types of things should outrage you. It should literally outrage you. And I, I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, Nate. Okay. Cause I want to ask you a question and this is what gets brought up a lot. I want to hear right. your response to this. Okay. This is totally unsolicited. Okay. Um, what would you say about if we weren't, you know, out there in every country protecting American interest, uh, wouldn't that let other governments like, you know, Russia and uh, maybe some European countries or something, wouldn't that make them more power? Like, wouldn't they be the most powerful in the world? And we should fear something like that. Because like, if we're not in Iraq and Libya and Syria and Iran and Djibouti and all these places, like Russia would be, and then they would be the most powerful and, and our liberty would be a threat. Well, you kind of see that that could kind of remind you of World War II with uh, with Germany going around, obviously invading countries and and expanding uh, expanding their rule. And uh, I think that at a point that becomes dangerous if uh, their stated goal is that you're is that you're next or their conquest is that they're going to take over the whole world. But you know, say in Russia or w- one of these countries. If they went through and, and took over some of these Middle Eastern countries, like it's not, I don't think that it's immediately apparent that that would be worse than what's what's currently going on. Um, I also think that we spend more money than like the next 50 countries combined on our military. It would take a really, really long time for someone, they'd have to take over a lot of countries before they would still even be as powerful as our military. So that that wouldn't, you know, it would take a, it would take a long time. Now saying that they eventually did take over 40 or 40 or 50 countries and they became matched up with our, with our military. Um, I don't think you do anything until you see that you are threatened and, and actually in danger because everything else is, you're talking either a, a, uh, defensive military, or you're going to have an offensive military, and an offensive uh, military government uh, can go out and make a a lot of bad decisions. We talk about economics and our society and and everything that the government has really terrible unintended consequences to all of their actions that they take here in the U.S., but we have a hard time imagining that there's terrible unintended unintended consequences to everything that we do all around the world. Like if the government's working in America, then obviously we shouldn't trust them and they're doing a terrible job. But when they're around the world dropping bombs on people, they're perfect. They're doing such a great job. Every decision that they're making is great. It's the best decision that could possibly be made, even though 
we scrutinize and say that they make the worst decisions all the time when it comes to the American people, but we assume that they're making the best decisions all around the entire rest of the world. The logic doesn't make any sense to me. I would disagree a little bit. All right. Because I would say that if our allies are being attacked and they request help, then we can help. Because because especially allies like Great Britain and Canada and although some some liberties are dying in those western, you know, culture countries. Yeah. Like freedom of speech and stuff um is dying in the UK and and other places, but if if some European nations or at least where the idea where liberties at least held as a higher value than most other like countries that you don't want to go to. Um, if they were being attacked and they asked the United States military for help, I think that would be an okay situation because liberty's at threat. It may not be American liberty, but liberty's at threat with our allies. And could we have, could we have a vote on it still? Well, it has with to Congress? be Congress has to declare yeah. war. If we still, could- if we could still have a congressional vote on that and the American people thought that that was the best course of action, then I could, I could still get behind that. Right. Then again, the, that would be my only disagreement. Yeah. But, but other than that, like, I mean, even if it is like, look at Assad, it, probably not the best, but like, if you look at Syria throughout the years, they've had a mixture of people. Um, it's like different religions that peacefully live together, Muslims and, and Shias and Sunnis all different types of, of Muslims and Islamic beliefs. And there were Christians there and there were Catholics there and Buddhists and all kinds of people that peacefully existed. And even though Assad might not be the best person and he is a dictator, it, the, the country was stable. And the question is, is like, you know, Miss America's used to say all the time, like they're all for world peace. Yeah. Are we for world peace or not? I guess that means after we after we finish constructing the world into what we want it to be, then we're for world peace. But the can you bomb people into peace? No, definitely not. You you definitely cannot do that. The you know the the British colonies, the American colonies that were here in the mid seventeen early seventeen mid seventeen hundreds, you know we weren't just sitting here getting mad about stuff. And then all of a sudden France came over and started bombing the British outposts all over the place. You know, that that's not what happened. We, the, the people had to decide that they wanted to claim their freedom and their Liberty from the government that was taking it from them. And that is what made it real. And that's the issue that we run into that we ran into in Iraq and Afghanistan and all these places. Like we're trying to force an ideology on these people that that they don't have uh, our ideology of the individual rights uh, individual liberty that america was founded on that was that's a new idea we were one of the first countries to to have that for a reason it, it's very very uh it was very very rare and obviously a lot more countries have it now than did it than did at the time that we did it but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that we can just go into those countries, drop the perfect amount of bombs, and then people are just going to wake up reading Thomas Sowell's basic economics in the morning. Like that, that's not what's going to happen. They have to decide finally in their society and their culture, they have to decide that, that enough is enough and that they have to claim their own individual liberty. If they don't ever decide that, then we don't need to be involved. Like Hong Kong did with China. Yeah. Hong Kong broke off. And mm-hmm. They were like, let's see what we can do with free market economics. And then they obviously went straight downhill and everyone died. <laughs> no. It's no. Like, they blew well, up and became a, a it's, crazy. It's one of the biggest uh, yeah. economies in the world. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> so here's the thing. All you Warhawks out there, I know there's a lot of you. Um, if you want to go to war with Iran, um, let me know. And I will personally help you get to war with Iran. Yeah. I, I will help get you over there. Um, it's I'll, hot over there. I've been there. Yes. It's so, hot. And you want to protect yourself from the sun to get some yeah. sunscreen. I'm, I'll provide sunscreen. Yeah. Even. You need to wear long sleeves and pants while you're there. Con- yes. Contrary to what you would, would think you need to keep, uh, you need to keep a hat on and long sleeves and, and we'll get pants. like those big, it's very hot, like 
we'll either get sombreros or get like fishing caps. Yeah, that, I think sombreros would be would be pretty cool. <laughs> but, actually, yeah, yeah. It'd be pretty nice. Um, I'll give you some money. That you can stop in Saudi Arabia and buy some arms. Yeah, because uh, we we've, we've sent plenty of guns yeah. to them. They can go to Bahrain. Or you don't Qatar need to check or it's, any of those places. It's to too get much guns. of a hassle to get through TSA yeah. with a firearm. Um, but I'll give you the money for one, so you can have. I'll, I'll give you more money too. You can buy other types of weapons in yeah. Saudi Arabia before you go to Iran. So if 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 all you warhawks want to go to war with Iran, put your put your money where your mouth is. Actually, put your body. Put your body where your mouth is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the money. You put your body where your mouth is. <laughs> He's going to put his money where your body's mouth is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and you better get your ass over there. All right. Don't be. Don't say we need to go to war with Iran and and send our you know 18 to 25 year olds over there to 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 go die because that's exactly what. You know, I mean, obviously, I think we'll defeat Iran. I don't think Iran's much of an enemy here, but people still die. We've lost, I believe, over five thousand people now since since the war on terror. Five or six thousand people, and that's yep. that's Eight, not no one. Eighteen years, five thousand yeah. people. That's not no one. So, um, and then and then the other thing is is like if you think we're wrong, tell me, tell us, tell us why, not just that we're right. wrong. Yeah, don't te- don't comment on this post and be like wrong, like explain <laughs> yourself. Like let's have a civil, like let's have a civil discussion and Ben Shapiro, I'm calling you out. We always, we always get that. Like people will comment wrong and then we'll say like, okay, exp- you know, you got an argument and they're like, just is. <laughs> like, or I forgot. Okay. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I think we actually got that from someone. We did yeah, today. I forgot. That happened today. So, there's great, great discussion there. Yeah. We're, we're always willing to have this this discussion. Well, the thing about it is, is like, just like everyone else, we don't know everything. We have ideas that we talk about, um, ideas that we've thought about for as long as we've been alive so far. And there's still a lot more to learn, and there's a lot more to know. And you have to keep learning things your whole entire life. I saw this great meme the other day. That said, don't apologize for changing your stance on a position. Um, I've done that several times in my life. It, that's not about being inconsistent. That it, that means you've admitted that you've been ignorant in something before, and then your eyes have been open to something that has shedded some light on what your ignorance was about a particular situation. Never be afraid to apologize. You right. Know, you'll never have a successful marriage if you're not willing to apologize right. or say that you're wrong. It's just not going to happen. And you'll also, crazy enough, that walks all the way up to the ladder of politics, uh, everything. You have to be willing to admit that you're wrong or that, you know, we we came around on, uh, no, we didn't come around. That's a bad, uh, we'll, we're willing to discuss climate change more because it probably is not a good thing that we're burning things and putting it into the atmosphere, like overall, not a good thing. We're willing to have that conversation. What we're not willing to do is to dictate our economy in the direction to fix it. We think that capitalism will fix it. Right. So uh, I think people have invented plenty of things, thanks to capitalism that are going to help fix that. And same thing, you know, with when it comes to war, it's you, you can admit that you're wrong. It's not a bad thing. Speaking of climate change, how many doomsday scenario scenarios have played out or have been manifested throughout human history that never came true? Or if if we were on the brink of something that we didn't find a way to innovate our way to survive. Yeah, well, I mean, I I know that when I went to New York last time, it was really weird because I had to take a gondola everywhere because they were underwater. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if you guys have been there recently. But yeah. They um they went underwater in what 2000, 2005. 2005, yeah. 2005 that's when the that last prediction. last seen road in New York 2005 yeah. there's a few feet of water there now so but the cool thing is like everybody has like I got friends in Miami or I had friends in Miami but right like you know they're not there anymore but it's just the the ocean is rising man well everybody just got aquariums in their buildings at the yeah. bottom at the bottom of their building so yeah. you don't have to go anywhere in New York like you don't have to go to an actual aquarium there. It's just there. And I mean, AOC, yeah, she keeps repeating. We're 12 years away, 
12, 12 years away. Isn't it really weird that 12 would match up with uh, one more presidential term and then a full term for uh, a Democrat and then um, hmm. doomsday has to has to be fixed at that point in time? 12 years. It's just a weird, weird scenario for me. I don't know. I don't no. know why it's 12. Well, and all the models have been so wrong, like so wrong. The errors are just unbelievable. Well, I think they mainly focus on their appearance. The, that's the issue. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That's the, mo- the, the models. Yeah, those models. Uh, the computer models, they've been wrong too. Uh, not just the regular models. The computer models for climate change have so many errors, but it's not just that. It's, it's I, I want everybody to think about all the doomsday scenarios that have ever been thought of, like like the Y two K bug, you guys remember we were all going to die in in the new millennium millennium of the year two thousand because of Y two K. It's going to be mass chaos. Uh, the purge movies were going to be real. Mm-hmm. Um, people were going to be dying in the streets um, because computers could not the computers couldn't tell that it was going to be the year two thousand. They didn't know what zero zero was going to mean, and it was going everything was going to blow up. Yep, I still got cases of water left over from that. <laughs> You're still drinking on yeah, them. Yeah, still got them. <laughs> are, so. they, are they in your bunker? Yeah, down down in my Y2K bunker. Right. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, one thing I'll say on the, on the climate change, you know, people don't realize statistics, like how far off, even if a number looks good right now, uh, how far off a statistical variance can be and and if you happen to go in the direction of that variance and what standard deviations are around around a, a statistic so you know if you let's say that we're heading on down a straight road right now towards towards LA and we're and we're gonna go we're gonna go 1800 miles to LA and we got to go here's our straight shot and that's what we're gonna do now the thing is that sure you're you're heading towards LA but what happens if you were to turn your course right here in Nashville by like an inch? Now, well, like a like say a one one hundredth of a degree. Yeah. So um, that doesn't seem like much right now, and it won't seem like much through the state of Tennessee. You know, it's not going to seem like you're that far off. But by the time you go eighteen hundred miles, you might end up hitting Alaska instead. And that's the bad mileage representation because that's more like two thousand something. But the thing is, one I was little thinking change, Mexico. I was going south. Oh, you, you were going, going the north. other way. I was going north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. So you might hit Seattle if you just if you just changed it, but your course by one little tenth of a degree. That's how far off when you get to the end of the line you could be, and that's why these statistical models for climate change can be so far off because. If one little thing is not what they predicted, it can change the entire course of, of their entire prediction. And if you get outside those standard deviations on the on their little projections that they make, I mean, you can't predict you can't predict those. And that's that's kind of what we run we run into uh, when we get people like AOC saying that it's twelve years. We just proved something in that discussion right there. What's that? that you and I had a, a difference of thought. I was going south and you were going north and we were able to talk through that and reach a logical conclusion at yeah. the end. And we're not mad at each other. Uh, no, yeah. I'm not mad. Are you mad? No. Good. No, not yet. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. Yeah. That's just, you know, two smart people who think a little bit differently and we ended I up in the so. same place. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it is. I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty good on this, man. What do you What do you think? Yeah, I think that's good. The show is growing like crazy. Yes. Like I honestly didn't. I didn't expect it to just kind of balloon up this fast. But I mean, even the website, the GoodMorningLiberty.us or or BernieLies.com. I mean, this week alone is going to end up hitting almost four thousand views on the uh, just four thousand visits to the website this week. It's a brand new website. It's like a month old. Right. So. Uh, thank you to everyone who's going to that. Thank you to everyone who's sharing this with their friends. We were getting shares when we post the shows also, and that that's a great thing. And I didn't expect to be getting as many downloads as we're getting daily already. It's been awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, really on pumped. The, we took a break on the podcast. You know, mm-hmm. we, we didn't really record a show since uh, 
since 2018 yeah. sometime. So it's been a, a little bit of a break for us because we were focused on some other things. So it's been great to be back and to see all of you guys still enjoying the, what we're doing. Yeah. And and that's, that's what makes us come back every single day and do it all over again. If you like what you're hearing, keep telling your friends about it. Tell some friends, tell some, tell some people you don't think are going to like it at all because that helps. We need to stir up, you know, some conversation on the page. I want to hear why we're, why we're wrong about this. For Nate, sure. What's the best thing that people can do for this show? The very best thing for a podcast? Uh, ratings and reviews. How do you do that? You would go to your podcast app and it would say that uh, you can leave a rating or a review. And that, that would be the best thing because the more people do that, the more relevant your podcast app is going to find this podcast. So uh, the better, the best, highest rating, most ratings, the more legit it's going to be and the more likely it will be to show up. When you click on news and politics, um, it, it would be a lot more likely to show up in there, which you know, right now you get like, CNN and and like all the you know fake those, news those kinds of yeah the yeah. fake news places because they have a lot of people that are giving them ratings and reviews right so and you don't want that no no you don't unless they're bad reviews right yeah. so give those to CNN mm-hmm. good yeah. ones us bad ones to to the C- fake CNN yeah to fake people <laughs> all right guys hope you have a good day and a good morning Liberty.